Good morning, mighty Mustangs and mighty families. Get ready for the jam in minute. Our first exercise is speed skaters. You're going to leap from side to side, staying low. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Nice job. Our next exercise is mountain climbers. You're going to reach up into the sky with one arm and then the opposite leg and then switch like you're climbing a mountain. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You may be seated. Today is Monday, April 27th, and it is National Prime Rib Day. Students, at this time, I need you to grab an adult if they're available. If not, please let them know to watch this morning announcements because there is some important information on it. As many of you guys may know, the School 25 building had a major steam leak in it while we've been away, and it caused some extensive damage to our building. Facilities has decided to close the building and to move School 25 to a new building. If we go back to school this year, we'll be at School Number 2, and next year we'll be located at the Freddie Thomas building. Now all of the same teachers and students will be moving there, and it will still be our mighty Mustang family. It doesn't matter where we are, it matters who we are. We will do the same job teaching the students that we love as we are doing right now online. If you have any questions, please visit the Nathaniel Hawthorne School 25 website. <laughs> Friday's answer was silence. Today's riddle is, what begins with an E and only has one letter? <whistles> what time do ducks wake up? At the quack of dawn. <laughs> I hope you all are having a nice day today. Um, if you're seeing this on Thursday, today is actually World Book Day, which is pretty cool. So I hope that you all find a nice book to read and enjoy. So for today's mindfulness activity, we are going to look back at worry one last time. So when we've talked about worry, we've drawn a picture of it. We've looked at what are things that we can control or what are things that we can't control. And for the worries that we can't control, we practice visualizing, putting those worries on a train and having the train take those worries away. And we also practice um, writing our worries or drawing our worry on a piece of paper and then scrunching it up and throwing it away um, as a way of letting go of our worry. So for one last exercise that I wanted to practice with worry, um, I wanted you guys to actually take some time to feel your worries, to think about your worries. Um, your worries are real. They're true. They're worries in your head. And even if they're things that you don't have control over, they are still things that bother you. And sometimes those things need to be felt and thought about for a minute before you can let them go. So for today's activity, what we're going to do is worry for three minutes. You can have set a timer for three minutes and during those three minutes, allow yourself to have all the worried thoughts that you might have. You might wanna talk with someone for those three minutes about your worries. You might wanna write them down. You might just wanna sit quietly and think of those worries in your head. Whatever you wanna do for those three minutes with your worry, go ahead and do it. And then when the timer goes off, that's it. You're done. Um, and we're going to move on and try to let those worries go. Alrighty, so let's set that timer and have that worry for three minutes. All right, now that your three minutes are up, it's time to walk away from your worry. Take a deep breath and let those feelings go, maybe move somewhere new, completely change your mindset, try to find a new activity to do, just to leave those worries where they were. And that's your worrying time for today. So we shouldn't be thinking about those worries at, um, at other times today. Those should be left with your worry time. And if you need to do that worry time again tomorrow, 
go for it. Whatever you need to do to help make those worries a little bit less taxing on you. So I hope that you find this activity helpful. Enjoy the rest of your day. Read something or look at some pictures in the book or find um, some good books online, on Lexia maybe, or listen to a story on YouTube. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I miss you guys. Bye. Hi everyone. It's Mrs. Braddox, your friendly neighborhood sign language interpreter, bringing you the sign of the day. Another special that we go to every week is Jim with Mr. Melendez. The sign for Jim is a little bit weird because it looks a little bit like you're lifting weights and jumping rope at the same time. So bring both of your hands up, take your pointy finger, your index finger, and crook it, and then do it in a circular motion as if you are lifting weights and jumping rope at the same time. And if you really can lift weights and jump rope at the same time, then you're pretty impressive. I will show you the sign for our last special tomorrow, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I miss you, love you, See you soon. Hi, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read you the story about called The Biggest Snowman Ever, and it's written by Stephen Kroll, illustrated by Jenny Bassett. The reason I'm reading you a story about snow is because it just doesn't stop snowing around here. So I thought maybe you'd like to hear a snow story. There were two... Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same snowman, and this is how it happened. On a bright winter day, the mayor of Mouseville announced the Down Snowman Contest. Whoever makes the biggest snowman will win a prize, he declared. All the mice were excited. The judging of the contest will take place in two weeks, said the mayor. Good luck to all of you. I'm going to make a really big snow princess, said Penelope. I'm going to make a really big snow Martian, said James. I'm going to make the biggest snowman ever, said Clayton the house mouse. Her friend, De His friend Desmond, the field mouse, frowned. No, you're not. I'm going to make the biggest snowman ever. Oh, yeah, said Clayton. Oh, yeah, said Desmond. That night, it snowed and snowed. Huge drifts covered driveways, roads, and fields. It was the perfect beginning for a snowman contest. In town, Penelope began her snow princess and James began his snow martian. Out in the country, Clayton and Desmond began their snowmen. Clayton made a snowball and rolled it along the ground. The more he rolled it, the bigger it got. Before long, he had a large base for his snowman. Not far away, Desmond was doing the same thing. The next day, Clayton made a huge snowball for his snowman's belly. Not far away, Desmond did the same thing. <coughs> that night, Clayton brought his dad out to see his snowman. Dad scratched his head. I don't know, son. It's going to be a it's going to be big, but I'm not sure it will be the biggest. Clayton smiled up at him. I'm just getting started, he said. Dad whispered in his ear, if you want to work faster, use a wheelbarrow to carry the snow. You'll see in a minute what a wheelbarrow is if you don't know. A little later, Desmond brought out his Uncle Vernon. I don't know, said Vernon. It's going to be big, but will it be the biggest? Desmond smiled. I'm just getting started. Vernon whispered in his ear, if you want to work faster, Use a wheelbarrow to carry the snow. 
That's what a wheelbarrow looks like. The next day, Clayton filled his wheelbarrow with snow. He piled snow onto the snowman. Then he rolled another snowball for the snow snowman's head. Not far away, Desmond did the same. They look big yet? What do you think? A few days later, Desmond ran into town to look at James's snow Martian and Penelope's snow princess. Hmm, he said. All of our snow people are the same size. That afternoon, Clayton made the same discovery. So all of them are the same size right now. Who do you think would win? We're looking for the biggest snowman ever. The next day, while working on his snowman, Clayton had an idea. He brushed the snow off his gloves and walked toward Desmond. At the same moment, Desmond had an idea. He brushed off the snow off his gloves and walked toward Clayton. They bumped into each other and fell down. I wonder what their idea is. Maybe you know. I have an idea, said Clayton. I have an idea, said Desmond. We should do this together, said Clayton. No one said we couldn't, said Desmond. Friends have a good idea to work together and make the biggest snowman ever. First, they rolled each part of Desmond's snowman over to the middle of the field. Then they rolled each part of Clayton's snowman over. They piled the snowballs on top of one another. Clayton dropped a floppy hat on the snowman's head. Desmond added a long scarf, huge coal eyes, and a giant carrot nose. Do they have the biggest one ever now? When they were done, they had built the biggest snowman ever. The morning of the contest, field mice and snowmobiles brought the judges to the country. You both win the prize, said the, said the mayor handing Clayton and Desmond a large wedge of Swiss cheese. Let the celebration begin. Everyone gathered to dance around the snowman, drink hot chocolate, and eat donuts. Yummy. We did it, said Clayton and Desmond, jumping up and down. We did it together. And that's the story of the biggest snowman ever. So these two mice fell in love with the, snow, the, the same snowman, and that's how it happened. So I hope you enjoyed the story of the biggest snowman ever. Remember to always be mighty and read for 30 minutes every day. Make sure you read for 30 minutes each night and always be mighty. I'll see you tomorrow.